So let's talk about Robinhood. Uh, the shares is on a wide right today. That's after a disappointing IPO debut. And there's much more about this trading app than you already know. Here's my colleague, Andrew Tupachi, now to bring me up to speed. How are these numbers on the economic front are, are piling to the market and our investors' sentiments? Good afternoon, Bosin. Yes, we are on the unemployment seesaw, if you will. Today's weekly jobless numbers, and those are the numbers that are pretty volatile. They are just the weekly numbers, indicate that first-time filers of unemployment dropped 14,000. That's the first time the number, the total number, was below 3 million. It came in at 385,000. So that's a positive number. It's heading in the right direction. I've said this before. You need a number of weeks in a row to see where the trend is going. Yesterday, we got the private payroll number. That's from the payroll service ADP. That number was quite disappointing. So tomorrow now, we get the big number. That's from the U.S. Labor Department's unemployment rate will come in. It also indicates how many people are in in the workforce and actively looking for a job. That number is also highly criticized. So all three numbers may or may not mean anything, but tomorrow we'll get a big number as far as the total unemployment. And it's a number the Biden administration is paying close attention to, obviously, because it goes to how effective the economic programs that they're putting forth is and whether we need more. It's also a number that the Federal Reserve will look at because the workforce and employment is one of the two main pillars that the Fed's charged with managing, that one and, of course, inflation. Meantime, the U.S. trade deficit surged 6.7 percent to $75.7 billion. That's the largest since 1992. A $1.2 billion increase in exports was more than offset by a $6 billion increase in, uh, in imports. Now, what does the trade deficit really mean? And it's, it's a big debate, but it basically shows in the aggregate that the U.S. economy is coming back strong and that consumers are purchasing a lot of goods, but they're just purchasing them from overseas sources, uh, not from the United States uh, in, in large amounts uh, last month. OK, uh, let's uh, take this from those uh, hard economic numbers to Robin Hood. And, you know, each time we talk about Robin Hood props up in the news, uh, I just have this kind of smile on my face because sometimes I just don't understand. But tell me, what's the latest about Robin Hood, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> what's in the name? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, this is a bizarre stock and a bizarre company, frankly. It's the millennial app for trading, and it went public last week. And, you know, its IPO debut was quite disappointing. Its stock actually fell. Well, for some reason, and it's kind of being credited for the meme um, the meme um, phenomenon with AMC and GameStop, its stock has been on fire. It rose 100%. Uh, since its debut now. Uh, today, it's trading down a little bit. That's because 97.9 million shares are being sold. Uh, and those shares are being sold from insiders. Now, the sell sales of these shares, we're told, was automatic. So it's not necessarily anyone uh, trying to get out while the getting is good, though that's not a terrible <laughs> investment decision. Uh, this seems to be a, um, a uh, automatic trading. So Robinhood shares are kind of falling today. We'll see what happens over the next few days. The stock has gone ro not only rocketed it up, but it has been halted uh, numerous times because of the volatility uh, associated with Robinhood. That's fine. That's fine. That's OK. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me go with how, how rather drive a, 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 an electric vehicle, by the way. So, President Biden is ambitious that 40% of American cars will be electric by the year 2030. Uh, that's not too far uh, from, from now. I'll still be around, I'm sure. So, um, is, is that so... Yeah, you'll be around. <laughs> I'm going to absolutely be around 2030. No, not too far from now. Could I have one of those in the U.S. So, what, what, we'll what, what, what are the folks thinking about this? Yeah, President Biden is intending to sign an executive order to make all vehicles sold by 2030, uh, 40 percent of them, electric. Now, it's not an executive order that actually has much teeth to it. It's more of a goal. It's not really an order. Car companies don't have to reach the goal. But this is the, uh, um, the goal that the Biden administration has set. And General Motors, Ford and Stellantis, that's the new name of Chrysler, Terrible name, by the way, Stellantis, but Chrysler, all say that they will support 
this idea of EV sales between 40 and 50 percent by 2030. So it's not a mandatory deal, but it is aspirational, in if you will. Uh, interestingly, Tesla wasn't invited to the ceremony uh, today, and uh, no one really could answer exactly why. Uh, the well, transportation secretary was asked that question, and he said, I don't know. I don't know why Tesla wasn't invited. Yeah, well, you know. Um, they sort of just, started the whole thing. Yeah, just hold on for a tweet from, from Elon Musk. He's going to tweet about it. Okay, let's leave it there for tonight. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's going to, going to send a tweet to everyone, and then we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Have a great day, Andrew, on Wall Street. Thank you so much.